Good evening and welcome to A-Level PE uh, virtual open evening. Uh, I'm Aidan Duffy, I'm Head of Sport at Hills Road Six One College. I'm joined by Paul Hansgate, who is Teacher of Physical Education, and Saul Waring, who is a Year 2 A-Level PE student. So uh, Paul and Saul are going to be coming into the uh, presentation a little bit later on. So to get us going, um, why study A-Level PE? So, uh, have you ever wondered, uh, a couple of quotes here, a couple of questions, why some people can run faster than others, um, how your personality affects your performance, why athletes take drugs, there's been lots um, of drug taking over the last 10 years in particular, it's always in the news, um, very fascinating stuff, how technology can help athletes, and more importantly, I would say why sport reflects society and society reflects sport, that's definitely something that is um going on in the papers, particularly at the moment. And the last thing, how sport has evolved over the century. So lots of things to discuss in AWP. Um, however, lots of students will be doing AWP because they are interested in a sport related career. So from medicine, sports medicine, physio, kinesiology, osteopathy. Um, likewise, we've got journalism, coaching, dietitians. There's lots and lots and lots of sports related career moves that's, that A level P students go on to do. Uh, we've got some ex Hills Road students um, that are here to, that are, we've recorded for today to show you about, about that. Um, however, you may be looking at doing A level P not because you're necessarily interested in going to a sport related career, but you just really enjoy A level P or you really enjoy sport. So, for example, down here, this, this blue tab the end of year, year 13 survey, the end of last year, uh, asked all the A-level PE students, uh, have you enjoyed this subject? 73% strongly agree, 27% uh, agree. So the average college uh, grade was one and we scored at 1.4. So even if you're thinking uh, maybe as a second subject or a third subject and you um, are interested in doing sport, you love sport, A-level PE should definitely be an option for you moving forward. So why study PE? Um, one of the best things about ALP is the, the, the broad, uh, diverse range of topics. So starting on the left, we've got sports injuries, we've got anatomy and physiology, we've got lots of exercise physiology. Uh, a personal favourite of mine is the biomechanics component, the big biomechanics, a little bit of maths, a little bit of physics in there. We've got skill acquisition, the history of sport, and also sports psychology. So lots and lots and lots of different big topics that we cover on A-Level PE. Um, so to sum up, you're developing the skills of a scientist as well as those of, of an art student. So teaching staff, uh, myself, head of sports, uh, we've got incredibly um, experienced teaching staff, we've got Mr Hansgate, uh, physical education teacher, and we've also got Miss Rogers, who's um, about to go off on maternity leave for the year, but she will be here um, by the time you come back. We've also got a really um, close-knit support group, support staff group. We've got Linda Swain, who's been at the college for nearly 15 years. She's our sports activator, works in marketing, sports marketing. She's also our network coach. But we've also got Catherine Owen and Dan Tibbet. So Catherine and Dan are two ex-A-level PE students. So Catherine um, was at the college between 2013 and 2015. She then went on to do a uh, sport and exercise science degree at Bangor University and got a first class degree. She's then come back as our sports coordinator. We've got Dan Tibbet, who was an A-level PE student last year, um, and he's having his gap year with us before going on to a sports scholarship over in America. So, Kath and Dan uh, both work with lots of uh, coursework groups. They work with support uh, so support mentors for the students, uh, and they're a good linchpin between the staff and the students. We also have uh, a really large um, coaching network. We've got 12 coaches that work in all the different sports across the college. Um, if you're interested in the actual college sports, there's another video on tonight at eight o'clock, um, which will deliver, um, I will deliver and discuss the three different options of sport that we have at the college with uh, competitive sport, enrichment sport and club sports. So what does the A-level PE course actually cover? So there's four components. So component one, which is the scientific principles is what I teach. Um, we look at the anatomy and physiology, we look at exercise physiology, and the biomechanics, the applied movement analysis. This is the biggest uh, weighting on the course. So it's 40% of the overall grade. 
um, it, you end up with a you know, two and a half hour exam at the end of the second year, which is 140 marks. Uh, component two, which is taught by Mr. Hansgates, the psychological and social principles of PE, skill acquisition, sports psychology, sport and society. You've also got um, Americanization, globalization, sport in there as well. And at the end of the two years, there is a two hour exam, 100 marks and 30%. So the biggest weighting is on the anatomy physiology, which it's, um, the students tend to prefer. Component three then. So component three is the practical performance. This is what you are, your practical assessed coursework. So it's 15% you can be assessed in um, a variety of sports. So you to find that list of sports, if you, if you type into Google, um, at Excel A-level PE and look at the specification, there's a, there's a list of sports that are accepted. Um, most sports are on there. The only ones that ten, have been taken off are um, most martial arts uh, sports. But there's been about 10, 10 additional sports added onto this year's specification. Um, this is a it's 40 marks, 15%. You, like I said, you can be assessed as a coach or as a performer. Component four, this is the uh, second piece of coursework. Again, do the 15% of the course, performance analysis and the PDP, personal development program. These are two written pieces of coursework. Um, in total, there's a cap, a word cap of three and a half thousand words. So if you have any older um, brothers or sisters that did A-level PE uh, over four years ago, they would have done the old coursework, which was up to around about 10 to 15, on some occasions, 20,000 words. So this is capped at three and a half thousand words. Most of the coursework is delivered in the second year, um, but a very diverse course. So what skills will I gain? So whether you're thinking university, you're thinking the, the workplace, um, one of the biggest things is formulating arguments by presenting and critically evaluating research evidence. So as there is such a large, um, on component two, there's lots of um, 15 mark essay questions. So there are six essay questions in the uh, component two exam. So you will spend a lot of time um, teaching you how to form arguments, how to debate, uh, particularly in those 15 marker questions. So again, accurate and concise writing with regards to the three and a half thousand word coursework. You will carry out your own research as part of the component for coursework. Uh, you'll also be using lots of different technology in, in the college. Um, we've got heart rate monitors, we've got light gates, we've got speed guns, we've got GPS trackers, so player tech trackers that the, the premiership footballers, premiership rugby players tend to use. We've got our own set of those. We've just, um, we're about to invest in a, a wing gate machine as well. So there's lots and lots of sports technology available on the AWP course. Um, again, group work, presentation skills, there'll be lots of group work um, throughout the two year course. But one of the biggest things is a, a deeper understanding of overall sport and society and being able to apply this to your exam question. So whether you are a one sport person or two sports, you will develop a knowledge and understanding of lots of different sports to be able to help you answer these 15 mark questions to get the top marks. So what support do we offer in A-level PE? I would argue this is where we stand out in comparison to lots of other A-level subjects, um, not just with the quantity of support, but the quality of support that is on offer. So currently we have three different types of workshops. So workshops either happen before college, after college or at lunch times. We've got two catch-up or COVID catch-up sessions going on at the moment. So these are um, two one-hour sessions with a uh, teacher live on Microsoft Teams going over previous content. We've got a Striving for A Star coursework subject, uh, a Striving for A Star workshop, sorry. Um, this is an invitation um, workshop whereby students that we deem have the potential to get an A Star in the exam are invited to and they work on exam technique. And 15 marker exam questions. We've also got a coursework workshop that happens once a week where students drop in and work with myself, with Kath, with Dan on their coursework to enable them to get the top marks. But also we've got drop-in sessions so students can email us at any point before or after college and come and actually see us on a one-to-one -one basis. We've also got here number two, uh, year 12, year 13 class sign up. So during non-COVID times we would have year 12 students um, signing up and going to year 13 lessons as extension work. So say, for example, they were interested in the energy systems and the year 13s were going through that. They could sign up, come into the class 
and join in. Likewise, year 13s have the option to drop down into year 12s for revision for catch up sessions. Like I said at the start, we've got two ex students as members of staff. This is hugely beneficial to the uh, to the group um, to be able to get that one to one uh, small group um, working in small groups with the students. We've got access to the everlearner.com. So I know that Boston College used the everlearner. There's more and more colleges and schools that are using everlearner, but this is a, a personalized um, tutorial and quizzes for our exam board for every single part of the course. There's a 10 to 15 minute pre-recorded video so students can work at their own pace, uh, whether in college or outside of college. The actual PE resources room, um, there's a small room just in the sport departments and um, PE students only. Um, for computer access, there's an abundance of extension reading, coursework examples, templates, all available only for stu uh, students that are doing a level PE. Also scaffolded coursework, templates, examples, we do lots of peer reviews, lots of peer um, support work um, to enable students to get full marks in their coursework. So for example, the average coursework grade last year was an A, um, despite students coming in um, very different levels of ability. Um, as a result of the scaffolded work and support that's on offer. One of the other big things that we'll, um, we really focus on in AWP is actual exam technique. We hear lots of teachers, lots of students talking about exam technique, but then actually spend a huge amount of time actually developing it. So one of the few things that we do, um, we have these things called roadmap. So we spend every single lesson uh, linking the content to exam questions and using these things called a roadmap to actually write your answer according to the mile schemes to make sure that we're using the connected words and answering all parts of the questions. So we've got these up in the classroom, we've got them in the resources room, the students have their own um, roadmap, and we use these on a daily basis. However, arguably um, the best source uh, resource that we've got, we've just finished it literally in the last few weeks for the component two, but we have created two revision tracker documents. So for the component one and component two, so the anatomy, physiology and the sociology side of the course. Within this revision tracker, that the students have got access to their own one. So it's got structured revision timetables, so they can start their revision now. They can structure it now. They can set targets now. They can identify what their weaknesses are now. But for each specification code on the course, there are key words with definitions on that particular part of the course. They've got recap resources, they've got exam questions and mark schemes that link to every single specification code on the course. In addition to that, they've got a 15 marker exam bank, which has got uh, model answers, mark schemes, so they can spend a huge amount of time getting up to grips with all the different components of the course. There's also an exam question analysis component. So every single exam question that has ever come out from A-level a Excel. Um, we've got all those questions, we've got the percentages of, for example, how many marks, what is the percentage of marks that come up on the neuromuscular system over the last five, six years in comparison to how many and what percentage of marks have come up for, uh, for example, the muscular system. So we can look at and we can allocate time accordingly to the different trends. And then the students have got all the different past papers, mark schemes and examiner's reports. So this is what a revision tracker looks like. For example, 1.1 uh, muscular skeletal system, we've got 1.11, which is the uh, course code. Names, the students need to know the names of the muscles and bones, understanding the types of movements during physical activities, regions, joints listed. So they've got uh, their own link. If they click on this link, it will take them to um, a document with all the definitions for the key words. They've got a variety of different resources to be able to recap specifically linked to this course code. And then they've got exam questions and answers mark schemes here. They've also got a uh, an area where they can set themselves targets for each part of the course. So we've got a little quote here from the end of year survey. Assessment activities in this subject have been helpful in helping me consolidate my learning. Again, strongly agree, it's 41%. Agree, 59%. So PE sits above the whole college average of 1.2 to 1. Added value. So another a way of showing um, how our support that is on offer in this department has had a, a, an impact on our students is by looking at the added value. So if you're not aware of what added value is, for example, this line here is what students are deemed to uh, get 
they're expected to get based on their current GCSE profiles. So when they come in, say for example, a student from general six or a B, you know, they're expected to get a B when they leave. So added value is anything above and beyond what they are expected to get. So the Hills Road added value average is uh, plus 0.06, and the three year average for added value for A-level PE is plus 0.42, so nearly half a grade. This is last year's grades uh, profile. So the, the black line is what our students were, were expected to get, and we overachieved it every single one of those, particularly the lower end and the, and the higher end. But our four, three year average is 0.42 of a grade. How and when will I be assessed? So assessment occurs in every single lesson. We do a huge amount of assessment, um, informal and formal assessment with the students. So they'll be assessed every single lesson, whether it's on quizzes, exam questions, uh, Q&A with the members of staff, the students. However, one of the big things that we do is we assess all of our students against their college benchmarks. So, for example, say a student comes in on a B grade, they are expected to get a minimum of a B grade in every single assessment. So it's not that it's not an aspirational grade, it's the minimum grade that they are uh, deemed to get. So if, for example, a student uh, doesn't get a B grade and uh, their college benchmark is a B, um, in their test, they would then come back, they'll go to a support workshop, they would then have to redo that test until they get to a B grade. The point of this is so that no students develop any gaps in their knowledge, nobody is left behind, uh, nobody is left to, well, I'll just sort that out nearer the exam time. Everybody comes along for the ride at the same time. So we have 12 end of unit tests in year one and eight unit tests in year two. So there's lots of assessment going on um, to prevent any gaps occurring along the way. Students are also assessed in their practical and the theoretical coursework. So again, in year one, they'll do a, uh, their practical coursework in year one, and then all the, the theoretical coursework will happen in year two. And then there's, again, there's two big exams. We've got the end of year 12 exam and the year 13 mock exam. Opportunities in PE. So this is, again, where I think A-Level P stands out. Um, we've got lots of trips, lots of workplace experience, lots of volunteering um, opportunities for A-Level P students. The biggest one um, is the uh, Boston trip. We have, for the last 17 years, this year is the first time we've not been due to COVID, but we have gone over to Boston with a group anywhere between 30 and 60 students. We stay at the Boston Hostel in the middle of town. And the point of it is for two for two purposes. So firstly, we go to watch all the amazing sport on offer in Boston. So we go to the Red Sox, the Bruins, the Patriots, the Celtics. We go to an abundance of um, university sports. We look at Harvard, Boston Uni, Boston College, um, Northeastern University. So there's a huge amount of sport we go to watch. And then secondly, we go for the link to the actual A-level PE course, which is of course, Americanization, globalization, sports technology, we go to MIT University, we go to Harvard University, um, students that are interested in doing um, physiotherapy or medical degrees, they sign up and they have two days uh, volunteering at Harvard Medical School, working with all the students, with all the student athletes, and all the doctors uh, and physios at Harvard, which is a fantastic opportunity and looks great on the CV. We've also got close links with Eng Reactive Clinic, which across the road from Hills Road, they've also got another um, another practice in Caulfield, I believe. So this is um, an ex-student, Jess Woodhouse. So she's come back in, we have a, come in every single year. Students then go over to Injury Active and work volunteering in the, in the clinic. We go over to Loughborough University for the, the Inspiring Minds Day. Um, each year we send about 15 students, 15 to 20 students to Loughborough University. Uh, two years ago, we sent 25 students to Loughborough University, which is, I think, a record. Um, so lots of opportunities at Loughborough. We also work with, closely with Anglian Ruskin University. Um, our students have been their master's guinea pigs for the last three years, working in their master's programs. So students were looking at uh, the role of subutamol uh, inhalers a few years ago, um, looking at VO2 max testing uh, last year. So year before last, not COVID. Um, we've got our own uh, player tech catapult um, uh, trackers. We've got our own re recording equipment for students for the coursework. Um, lots and lots of opportunities available here. 
So I've got a short video here that we're going to play in a second. This is uh, some ex A level PE students going back to uh, 2013 all the way up to last year and telling you about what combinations of uh, A level subjects they did alongside what their route after A level PE was. I'll play that for you now. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kate and I studied at Hills Road from 2013 to 2015. I took PE, German and French A-level. Hi there, my name is Lucy and I studied A-level PE alongside biology and psychology. I left Hills Road in 2019. Hi, my name is Fran Steele and I went to Hills Road from 2013 until 2015 and then my A2 levels were in PE, Biology and Chemistry. Hi guys, my name is George Paul and I studied PE last year at Hills Road alongside History and English Literature. Hi there, my name is George and I studied A-level PE between 2011 and 2013. Uh, uh, so I studied Biology, Maths and PE. Hiya, my name is Gemma, I studied PE, Biology and Spanish for A-level at Hills Road. <laughs> I took a gap year during which I did a ski season in France and also worked at a leisure centre. I then went to university in the US for four years on a full scholarship for rowing. I went to Michigan State University and studied kinesiology. I then went on to Cardiff University to study medicine uh, and an extra degree, degree in emergency and pre-hospital care. I now work as a junior doctor in Bridgend. I'm now studying physiotherapy at the University of Birmingham. I went to University of Kent I did my undergraduate in sport and exercise science there. Following on from there, I went to Loughborough University and I did my master's in sport and exercise nutrition. I ended up getting a scholarship to Yale University and um, majoring in molecular biology this year, starting on the uh, graduate entry medicine course at Cambridge University. One of the main reasons I chose A-level PE was because of the variation within the course. So theories we learned in sports psychology, we also covered in A-level psychology and similarly topics such as hormonal communication and the nervous system we also covered in A-level biology. I chose PE originally because of the content which I found really interesting anyway as well as the relationship it had with my sport which meant I could take the information I learned in the lessons straight out onto the pitch. This involved leadership styles, tactics, recovery methods, training principles and performance analysis which all enhanced my career as a rugby player. P as a subject is uh, fantastic for anyone looking to go into any kind of biomedical related degrees. Um, I've got friends that work in occupational therapy, osteopathy, physiotherapy, physicians associates, uh, research, biomedical sciences, sports science just to name a few. Um, so. ALP is fantastic, um, great group of teachers and always a great group of students as well. Uh, I can't recommend it to anyone highly enough, so good luck and choose PE. Brilliant, so um, hopefully you'll see there then there is no actual combination that necessarily works or doesn't work for A-level PE. Um, the important thing is that you pick, in my opinion, the important thing is that you pick is three subjects that you really, really love, you enjoy, and you will genuinely do much, much better than picking uh, subjects that you think you necessarily you have to pick. I would definitely advise that you pick subjects that really, really um, interest you. So, student performance. Um, our three-year average, three-year average is 77% A star B. Um, our A star A um last year it was 50 percent the year before that it was 45 percent a star a the national average a star b is 41 percent um again the national pass rate uh is 97 percent 99 percent what is worth knowing is that you know a lot of people say you know you come to hills road you've got to be this a star student um that's not the case we get students um you know at the top end we get students that are somewhere in the middle the lower ends you know a level PE students um, with the support that is on offer, we you know we we tailor it to everybody. So if you're have any queries about A level PE, you know I suggest that you, you apply, you come along, um, and if you have any questions, then just get in contact about that. So student destinations, obviously you saw from the uh, the alumni video that all of those students in particular went into sport related careers, whether it was medicine, physiotherapy, kinesiology. 
um, etc. But a lot of students do A double P that have no intention of going into a sport related career. Um, we've got chemistry, uh, uh, computer science, fashion, marketing. You know, it's it's such a diverse subject um, that will set you up for lots and lots of different careers. So this is for the 2019, not 2020 data. 89% went on to higher education, 6% employment, 5% apprenticeships. So what I'm going to, I'm going to introduce you to Saul Waring in a second, um, who is our current year two A-level PE student. Uh, and he's going to tell you about why he picked PE and what he particularly would like. So over to you, Saul. Hi, I'm a year 13 student and I take business, psychology and PE. I also play for the football team and um, I chose PE because I'm a very passionate person about sport. I've always played loads of different sports and um, I studied PE at GCSE also and enjoyed it then. Um, my original goal was to become a physiotherapist, but I've once I started PE, I've had a look at all the different options I have. And there's loads of different careers, so I'm still yet to decide. That's why I'm taking my gap year. Um, I like the practical element of sport because we get to obviously play um, and train and learn the different methods um, in sport. But we also get to do different fitness tests and stuff like that, which are a bit fun, but they're a bit tedious. Sometimes you get to choose. Um, PE is very different from my other subjects. I get to um, sit into loads of different, uh, sorry, I sit into loads of different revision sessions. There's loads of different revision sessions that are available. Um, these help uh, with PE. It's when I'm in my PE sessions, it's very, um, it's, sorry. There's, lo there's, a, there's a wide range of topics in PE and um, I enjoy that mainly because it's very, they vary. Uh, even if you're not sporty, you can do PE. You don't have to actually participate in any sports. You can be a coach and simply just do a coaching kind of thing. Um, if you take PE, there's also a PE resource room, which I'm sitting in right now, which is lovely. You get um, all computer access and everything, and it's nice and um, quiet, so you can do your own work and nice and peaceful. Brilliant. Thank you, Saul. Thank you very much. So what we're going to do now, uh, we're going to open this up to question and answer. Uh, I'm going to pass over to Mr. Hansgate, who is going to um, direct the Q&A. Uh, so he's going to uh, say the, the questions out loud that we've got and um, go from there. So you, you may bounce them to me, you might bounce them to Saul. Uh, over to you, Mr. Hansgate. Thanks, Mr. Duffy, and thank you for your questions, everybody. There's been some really, really interesting questions, and I'd like to run through our responses to them now. Um, the first question I asked, which is a really good one, is how many people are on the course? So currently in year 12, we have 64 students, and that's approximately um, 21 or 22 uh, people in each class. So it's a vibrant, um, energetic classroom as you'd expect from PE students um, all sharing the same passion and obviously creating a, a good a great learning environment uh, we retain the vast majority of students as you'd expect through to year 13 and currently there's um, over 57 students on the year 13 course the maximum group size for the college is 24 so you can see that we're very heavily populated and a very uh, popular subject for students to take Evie has asked um, about practical um, sessions in lessons, which again is a great question. Mr. Duffy has covered quite a bit of ground there, but it's worth saying that, that the opportunities for practical in both sides of the course are numerous. So it might be that if you're looking at, for example, uh, fitness testing, as Sewell will be well aware, there was a, a batch of fitness tests that were done over a number of theoretical lessons, so actually students taking part in those fitness tests Mr. Duffy mentioned the light gates and mentioned the performance trackers. And of course, we get out the tech when we do the practical sessions. So I would like to stress it's not just we are going to assess you at football today or you're going to do netball today. Very much the opposite. We are going to test the theory of energy systems that you've been looking at in the classroom. Now we'll go across and do it in a lab and in a more of a lab situation. So it is sports science in its purest sense. During lockdown, we've had to become, as everybody has, much more adaptable, and I guess technology has been the saviour in many, many um, respects. So I've got, I made a list here of the different ways that we've been using technology to deliver, to make it interactive, 
So we've got the whiteboard fox, we've got Kahoot, we've, Mr. Duffy mentioned Everlearner. So we embrace technology. We're a, a forward thinking uh, department and certainly our lessons are fully sort of tooled up in terms of all the technology that we could, we could exploit. Um, Scarlett asked the most important question, are there trips on the A-level PE course? And Mr. Duffy has gone into great detail about the trip. I'm, I feel a little bit sorry for Sewell at the moment because he's having to sit there and hear about Boston and he's one of the only groups for 16 years that hasn't been able to go, but it is a fantastic trip. I've been lucky enough to go five or six times. And so that's a, a real highlight. But as Mr. Duffy mentioned, um, as well, Scarlett, that we do make use of the fantastic facilities around us, so Anglia Ruskin University's labs, Loughborough University's labs, etc. So there are, there, are, there are lots of opportunities in terms of trips. Um, Evie and Charlie asked about coursework. It's just worth reiterating what Mr. Duffy said. 30% um, of your assessment at the end of the course will be based upon your coursework marks. Of that 30%, 15 is your practical performance, in a sport of your choosing, just one sport, and the other 15% is a performance analysis assignment. So you could say that 15% of your um, overall course will be based upon your performance in sport. As Sewell really um, correctly pointed out, you, do I have to be a high level performer? No. You have to be a, a performer that's enthusiastic and disciplined and current, i.e. training, etc., but not high performance. We have uh, lots of students with a variety of standards, and as Mr. Duffy pointed out, they all perform exceptionally well against the exam board criteria. Um, it is possible as well to, to be a coach as well as a performer. We have very many students that are very, very, very good coaches, and they get their just rewards in terms of the practical assessment. Maisie has asked, do I have to have done GCSE PE um, or BTEC sport to be accessing the course? Brilliant question, uh, Maisie. The answer is no. The PA level is a standalone course. There is no prerequisite to have done any study into, uh, into PE. I know that you mentioned you're doing GCSE dance, which is obviously a, a practical sport, so that will stand you in good stead. But we teach from the ground up. There's no um, teaching that requires you to have got prior knowledge. So there will be a, a, a wide range of students in our course, and many of those perhaps haven't had the opportunity to do GCSEP. So, um, yeah, that's no bar to entry. Uh, Blaze has asked, is sports science included? It's a great question, and I think we've probably covered that in as much that, yes, um, what the 50% of the exam is based around biomechanics, physiology, energy systems, respiratory, circulatory, muscular systems, etc. So you'll get a real fix of sports science. Is there a sports science A-level? No, there's no need because physical education A-level is sports science based. Um, Daisy has asked the question about which exam board we do. Um, it's Edexcel and the college has done Edexlp for many, many years. We have obviously considered AQA, OCR and other courses. But we, um, we appreciate that at Excel, we have a great deal of knowledge. We know what the examiners are looking for. We understand what the practical moderators are looking for. And we, we give you the full benefit of that experience. So at Excel is the exam board um, that you would be studying. Um, Christoph has asked a, a great question, which I haven't had before. And it's, what would a normal P A level lesson look like? Uh, I'm tempted to put on the spot here, but I think I would, I would start by saying um, that there isn't a normal PE lesson. And I just made some notes whilst I was thinking about that. You, in, in some respects, there are, there, are, there are parts that are similar. You have a, an, an icebreaker activity when you come into class, and that's worth mentioning. The classroom is a social environment because we have found for many, many years that the people you're sat with, if you get on with, if you know them well, you work better. So we do encourage people to get talking. We do lots and lots of group, uh, small group work where you can get to know the people that you're working with. And like I say, we do lots of icebreaker activities. Um, there are brain teasers at the start of the lesson again, just to open up your minds. We do uh, lots of discussions, lots of debates, particularly in the uh, social cultural part of the course, history of sport, is commercialization ruining and the Olympic ethos and the, the fair play uh, at the expense of win at all costs. 
Um, lots of questioning. We do like to put our students under a little bit of pressure in the classroom in terms of questioning and, and let, let ensuring we know what they're thinking. Um, we've mentioned the practicals, etc. I don't think, uh, Sewell, is there anything that you'd like to add to that? Anything I've missed? You're, you're, you're speaking uh, during the course at the moment, obviously. Yeah, last week we did a debate, which was quite good. So it's kind of a whole class debate. You'll get to interpret all your own different points and everything. And yeah, because it's such a wide course, there's so much to talk about. So every lesson is almost different. There's loads to talk about. Excellent. Thanks, Sewell. Um, Letty has asked a question about high level sport, which I think I've covered. So Letty, it's a great question. And, and you should be rest assured that not everybody stepping through the door is a high level performer. We do have them, as you'd expect. We have national standard, even international standard performers. But that isn't the base. That isn't even the, the average. Okay, so there is passion, it's enthusiasm, that's what's required really. Um, I've got a question here again from Evie, so thanks for that Evie. It says, what grade are you expected to get at GCSE to do it at A-level? I think I'd like to throw that to uh, Mr. Duffy, if I may. So it's a good question. Um, to get onto the A-level PE course, you need a six in a science. So it could be triple science, it could be uh, biology. Um, and then you'd also need a six in a written subject. So it could be English, it could be geography or uh, history. Okay, so you need to be able to show those. Like I say, it's the, the skills of a scientist as well as an art student. So you need to be able to have a good understanding of the human body um, alongside having uh, the ability to write um, good, well answered, um, concise exam questions. Excellent. Thank you, uh, thanks, Mr. Duffy. Uh, Felix has just asked the question, which is, um, is taking four A-levels, um, and, and he mentioned the A-levels, I won't go through those, but is that tricky? Yes, it's very tricky, um, Felix. It depends, of course, entirely on your motivation. It depends upon your um, ability to sort of respond efficiently to task. That kind of question, really, is best answered in negotiation with your other subjects. So that's where we would say, look, it's a good opportunity to get in touch with Mr. Duffy. Uh, I'm sure Mr. Duffy will give his email address at the end of the session and start to, to, to sort of get to grips with that. It would be a challenge, of course, doing four ables uh, in any subjects would be a challenge. And we certainly must be uh, appreciative of the fact that PE level is a testing rigorous A level. So, it, you know, we, we have a misconception historically that P might be a slightly easier or a softer option. That misconception lasts with students um, about two weeks when they appreciate that it isn't. Now we obviously uh, have these sessions where we can explain exactly what the, the course is so that you come in with eyes open. And you should be aware it's a rigorous A-level. It will give you all the sports science and all the debating that you want, and it will push you. So, you know, that, that should be um, taken into account when considering which courses are for you. Um, and th just building upon that, a question that was asked yesterday was regarding the Russell Group Universities and do they um, accept PE A-level as a course? Um, again, the Russell Group Universities have moved a long way to, to uh, get to grips with what the course actually is. Um, they had a historical view previously and that's changed. I think. Um, they now respect the fact that it's a hard science as well as a debating subject. You would, of course, um, check with any university before using a subject as a uh, entry. Um, but we can safely say that there's uh, been a lot of great work done to convince both students and the wider general public, including academia, that PE label is a really rigorous course. And, and, and that's certainly something you should be aware of. Um, that's all the questions I have. Um, at the moment. So I'm going to hand you back to Mr. Duffy. I will still be policing the questions. So if there's something you're dying to ask, uh, you may just get in before we run out of time. So I'll, I'll pass you now back over to Mr. Duffy. Brilliant. Thank you. Sounds good. Um, so I just want to draw this to a close, really, as we haven't got any more questions coming through. I just want to thank everybody for um, coming on board. Uh, thank you to Saul. Thank you to Mr. Hansgate for being involved in the presentation. Um, a lasting comment would be, you know, if you are considering a P, um, please do consider us. Uh, it's a very science-based course, 
there's a huge amount of human biology. If you, you know, if you're interested in biology and human biology, A level PE is the course to pick. Um, don't be put off by uh, the, the the practical components. So there's this 15% for your coursework, but it, there's there is a very science based course actually on a day to day basis. If anybody has any questions about the course or about what a day to day look like. Please get in contact with me personally. It's a duffy at hillsroad.ac.uk. Um, for further information, if you look on the subject page for A Level PE on the Hills Road website, there's a, a five minute video on there that goes into a significant more detail about the breakdown of the course. There's some more uh, detailed student um, opinions of what, what students have gone on to do. Um, so please have a look. Please uh, research A Level PE a bit more and do consider this when you make your options. Um, thank you again for tuning in and uh, I hope you have a good rest of your evening. Many thanks.